Hey everyone, it's Jack from whatculture.com and if we could just have a moment of silence for the announcing career of one John Bradshaw Layfield and, and Ross's sweet t-shirt money as well. Poor guy. But with that out of the way, let's look forward to a new era of Smackdown Live, one with Corey Graves at the helm, not at the helm, like it's sort of alongside the other announced lads, but with Corey Graves there, uh, certainly one of the best colour commentators in the world today and probably going to go down as one of the best ever if he keeps going how he is. He's really, really good and that explains why they've trusted him with the position on both Raw and Smackdown. So with an optimistic start, let's see how Smackdown did. Let's get into all the ups and all the downs from this week on Smackdown Live from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Let's go. So we open the show with Randy Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura, and I guess because they can't really trust Shinsuke with an elongated promo in the ring, there was like a pre-recorded thing where they're both stood in eerie corridors, and Randy's like, I've seen flames burn out, and I've seen stars, and, and stuff. Nakamura's like, oh, I respect the legacy of Randy Orton, but I'm going to win. Because obviously they're, they're in the main event for the number one contendership to Jinder Mahal's WWE Championship. That's right, Randy Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura are unable to to beat Jinder Mahal and are fighting for the right to face him once again. Just have another shot at the king, at the champ, Jinder Mahal. This gets a down, it was a bit awkward. Lovely shot, lovely shots. Well, really well shot, bit awkward. Next up, the segment that everyone's probably gonna be talking about uh, today, going forwards, Kevin Owens hit the ring, interrupting Carmella and Natalia who were about to have a match, or at least Carmella who was calling out Natalia for a match. And Owens said, I'm the, I'm the referee now, I do what I want. And then Shane came out and went, no, you don't. And then Carmella and Ellsworth kind of disappeared for a bit because they needed to get out of the way while shit went down. Then Shane McMahon and Kevin Owens stood in the ring and Kevin Owens cut one of the most savage, kind of true promos I've ever heard him cut. He said, Shane, look, you're, um, why do you always make everything about you? Everything's got to be about you. It's all about you. Why? Maybe your father didn't pay you enough attention as a child, which we all know is almost certainly objectively true. Um, Phil. It's true, isn't it? Yeah. He said, you get your children to come and dance for you during your entrance. <laughs> he said, look, Dad, I can fall off buildings and get up again. <laughs> and Shane's just like, don't mention my kids again, man. And then he mentioned his kids again, and Shane beat the shit out of him, which I wasn't too keen on. I hate how Shane's portrayed as like one of the hardest men in WWE, but for Owens' promo, it was hilarious. And for the dramatic nature of Daniel Bryan coming out to stop Shane, be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you doing? It was all really good stuff, and it certainly gets it up. Oh, hang on. That's right, it's the return of my city facts, because I realized I know very little about the city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, so, fact number one. Here you go, Phil. I'm excited. Uh, it's named after the Cascades of the Big Sioux River. Uh, the falls were created around 14,000 years ago during the last ice age and attracted numerous settlers over the history of Sioux Falls from various Native American tribes to European settlers over the years. Excellent. Mm, lovely. Next up we had that match between Carmella and Natalia. It was a decent match. Uh, I may have gone in with slightly high expectations because I've been watching quite a lot of the Mae Young Classic and certainly the later rounds of that were pretty good. Uh, women like Kyrie Sane and Tony Storm put on great matches, but uh, this was perfectly decent. Um, Carmella was very, very angry at James Ellsworth. He slid in the briefcase and was like, gosh, it ain't gone. And then she was like, no, no, not yet, not yet. And Natalia rolled her up, one, two, three. Carmella was furious, cut a promo on Ellsworth afterwards saying, look, it's over between us, it's totally over. Then later on in the show, he groveled and apologized to her backstage and agreed that he was a, a genetic freak, <laughs> which I found a bit far. But um, she then said, look, we're doing things my way. Uh, and she kissed him. Where? And then slapped him like properly hard and then walked off and he was like, it was, I get it gets up, I think it's all right, interesting developments. Big cast sat at home watching his missus kissing James Ellsworth. It's a horrible industry. Next up, Dolph Ziggler, oh bless him, bless him. This was his big repackage that everyone had been talking about and clearly he'd pitched this to them and then they'd either gone go for it Dolph, we trust in you and his idea wasn't that good or they'd watered down his idea quite a lot and it didn't come out very good. I'm not sure which one it is, but this is what happened. So Ziggler came out and said, look, I'm back and I've got a point to prove. And I understood his point. His point was that no one can do what he does in the ring. He's one of the best workers, pure just doing the moves in the world. Um, but then 
you know, he hasn't got a gimmick that people latch onto. So he came out as Cena, and he did the whole Cena thing. That's why I chose that picture. Look how f***ing silly he looks. That's ridiculous. Then he went back, and then he came out as Randy Savage with like a, a girl, like a valet next to him. And then he went back, and then he came out as uh, Naomi and did the dance and stuff in the wig. But it was all kind of drawn out and, and didn't connect as much as I think Ziggler would have liked to imagine. But I see his point. He's saying that I can do what I, I, can do, what I do in the ring better than most people, but it's because of the, the gimmick. He actually used the word gimmick that I'm not getting over. Um, and it, it was, on paper, I can see how he might have thought this is gonna be great, but sadly, it didn't really work in execution and I have to give it a doubt. Sami Zayn comes out of a match with Aiden English after their last match was stricken from the record, struck, stricken, struck from the record, stricken by uh, Shane McMahon because of Kevin Owens' interference last week. This week, Aiden English beats Sami Zayn with a roll up in a minute. They're messing with me now, Phil. They're messing with me now. That's my boy. This gets a down. You suck. Oh. No, like, no, like, no. Don't keep it rolling. What the f? What happened there? Why? No idea. Okay, let's get, let's get another Sioux Falls fact out of the way. The arrival of the railroads in the 1880s saw Sioux Falls' population increase by about five times. Wow. Uh, but then a severe plague of grasshoppers. Oh, so far. And a national economic depression halted the boom in the early 1890s. In that decade, the city grew by only 89 people, but presumably lots of grasshoppers. Grasshoppers? <laughs> I d fair enough, like, they could eat all the crops, I guess. Yeah. Or maybe just so. creep people out a bit, like, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't have sex now. No, let's not repopulate the city, because grasshoppers everywhere. Then we went backstage, where the Usos and the New Day were with Daniel Bryan, and Bryan went, what's your stipulation for next week's title match? And the Usos went, it's a Sin City street fight. Ugh! Which I think is actually quite cool. Like, obviously it's in Las Vegas next week, and street fights are good. New Day and uh, the Usos have great chemistry. I'm sure they'll do really well. Uh, but then Shane got a phone call, and it was later revealed to be from Vince McMahon. Shane came out to the ring, no music, nothing. It seemed proper, like, unscripted. It was great. He said, Shane, I'm going to need you to come down to the ring. Shane came down to the ring. Daniel Bryan said, Shane, you can't be doing that. Like, the Miz ripped into me, and I didn't touch him because I, I valued my, my professionalism and all that. And Shane went, look. <laughs> Shane's like, look, you mentioned my kids. When you mention my kids, that's a line you just don't cross. Like, Shane's so cool, guys. Like, I just I can't get over how great he is. But then Brian went, look, I've had a call from your dad, and Shane did the best face. He was like, not my dad. And then, Brian, and then Brian went, you're literally suspended, mate. Like, it was genius. Shane looked sad. Uh, and it's obviously going to lead to Shane versus Owen somewhere down the line. And then we learn later on that uh, Vince will be here next week on SmackDown in Las Vegas to address the situation. Oh, that's exciting. This gets an up. Next up, Ty Dillinger versus Baron Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin got a win. Maybe his burial is over. Uh, AJ Styles was on commentary and, you know, they had a bit of an argument and stuff. Uh, I think this is set up to a title match probably between Corbin and AJ for the US belt. Then backstage, AJ said to Ty Dillinger, you did well, man. I'm giving you a title shot next week. That should be a good match. AJ versus Ty Dillinger should be pretty good. You'd expect AJ to retain. This gets an up. In terms of arts and culture, Sioux Falls is perhaps best known for its annual sculpture walk and the sculptures change year to year. Are they of grasshoppers? <laughs> but I, I don't know if they're of grasshoppers. <laughs> Finally, we reached the main event, and it was Shinsuke Nakamura versus Randy Randy Orton. Uh, and this was a good match. Um, yeah, it was a good match. I was really pleased because obviously Randy's had a bit of a nightmare year. Uh, and Shinsuke has not had the best year, and yet they still managed to put on a good match. Uh, Shinsuke won, which was the right call, giving it up. Uh, he did a sick reversal later on. Randy Orton went for the RKO. Shinsuke fell into an armbar. It was brilliant. Uh, then transitioned into a triangle. Randy Orton powered out, slammed him down. They went a bit more. He tried for another RKO. Shinsuke into the back cracker and then hit the Kinshasa. And Corey, Corey Graves was, of course, on commentary to go, Kinshasa! Rather than JBL there going like, ball game. And off. Uh, really good stuff. Good main event. Right guy won. Hopefully, he goes on to beat Jinder Mahal. You'd, you'd like to think. So that's all for this week on SmackDown Ups and Downs. I have one more Sue Falls fact before we go. The Ups have won, which is a bit misleading because I think it was a bit of a weaker show, but the good stuff was good, the bad stuff was bad, and I guess the, the Ups just edged it out. But my final Sue Falls fact, partially due to the lack of estate corporate income tax, 
Sioux Falls is the home of a number of financial companies. I'd like to suggest that it's entirely due to the lack of a stick. <laughs> in fact, Forbes named Sioux Falls the number one best small place for business and careers in 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008 and 2009. You horrible, corrupt bastards. I hope the grasshoppers come back and get you again. I've been Jack from WhatCulture.com. Thank you very much for watching Smackdown Live's Ups and Downs uh, featuring my Sioux Falls facts. I will be back next week. I'll see you soon.